Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I just wanna make sure this microphone's on because I recorded this 20 minute video and um, lost the audio. Don't know how that happened, but uh, whatever. So today we're gonna to be talking about why it is a very, very, very bad idea to purchase an old car with low mileage. Now you might ask me, where did you get this idea from? How does this have anything to do with BMW? Um, this actually has direct correlation with my BMW. My BMW, if you guys don't know, has very, very, very low mileage for the year. I bought it with 55,000 miles for a 2006. Now for a 2006 car with 55,000 miles, that's considerably very low. Um, that's not like uh, kind of sketchy kind of low, but that's pretty low. I found another one at the time with only 25,000 miles, but that had just an ugly interior and an ugly exterior, so I didn't even go for that one. But that doesn't matter. Today we're gonna to be talking about why it's a really bad idea to buy a low mileage used car that's old. Now something people don't know when you buy an old car with low miles, why, how does it have low miles? Like, has it been driven? Has it been sitting for like six months and only driven like on special occasions to like the Bahamas? How does it have low miles? Like that's just a question, right? So in most cases, people that have low mileage cars tend to drive maybe on the weekends and it's only from like maybe like a very, very, very short drive, like a 15 minute drive there, 15 drive back. And when that's the case, that means your engine has never hit normal heated operation temperatures. A car needs to be in like pretty warm for it to be in normal temperatures. It's like you're not actually full throttle sometimes and on the highway, you're literally just stop and go traffic. That can actually cause harm to your car. Now you might ask, how is uh, babying your car gonna cause harm to a car? When your car hasn't hit normal operation temperatures, that can build rust in the engine. I might ask, how does that happen? When your car hits normal operation temperatures, the, the combustion gets released. Um, so when your car never hits normal operation temperatures, the combustion never ever you know leaves the engine, which can cause rust and cause damage to your engine. Now I hope I don't have that problem. We won't know this till the long run. But all I know is that I have all kinds of leaks because the car was never ever pushed to the to the capabilities this car can get. I mean, like I'm not telling you to go gas it to go floor it to go drift it. Whoa, definitely not talking about that kind of stuff. But all I'm saying is, if you don't drive it at normal speeds um, and just trying to, like, you know, 65 miles per hour on the highway here and there, like maybe once a week, just getting the car warmed up and getting the flu fluid circulating in the engine, it could cause a lot of damage if you don't. Another problem when you don't hit normal operation temperatures, you can build moisture in the exhaust. Now, you might think, how is that a problem? You know, when I leave a car out in the snow and, you know, sometimes, you know, I was like, who cares, right? Well, when you build moisture in the in the exhaust, it can cause harm to your catalytic converter. And in that case, if you have a catalytic converter problem, that's gonna cost you a lot. It's gonna be a lot to diagnose, you know, with your exhaust, if you end up replacing it all. Is it the catalytic converter? Um, same applies to the engine. If you have engine rust, it's, it's probably shot. Um, these are, I'm literally talking worst case scenarios, but this type of stuff you won't know until the long run. Now you could take it to a shop and get it inspected and that gets me to my part two. Um, if I were you guys and you get a low mileage used car, which I definitely won't after having my first low mileage used car that's old, get all the fluids replaced. Now fluids I recommend changing will be like the brake fluid, uh, the power steering fluid, the training fluid, and of course do a complete radiator flush. Um, you wanna basically have your whole everything in the engine cleaned and everything. You also wanna replace all your filters, uh, you know, your intake filters, your engine filters, your air conditioning filters. You, know, you wanna replace everything. You wanna make sure your car is being well taken care of. You don't know how long it's been sitting. You don't know if the oil is in globs. You don't know if the fluids are black. Now, for my car, if you guys didn't know, I didn't have a training issue when I bought the car, but three months after I bought it, I started having some training issues. And that mainly is because the car was never broken in. The car was always dri driven like a grandma. It has like barely ever um, was driven harshly. Um, it was well taken care of. And all of a sudden, me as a teen, I'm driving it harshly. I don't even drive it like, I don't even go to races. It's a 330i. I can't really beat anything in a race. But I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I hit 80, 90, 100 miles per hour. But that's on rare occasions. But of course, the first three months that I had the car, that wasn't in my intentions. I never ever went really that fast. I was keeping under 70 on the highway. 
but I started having transmission jerkiness issues and I had to end up replacing my fluid pan, my fluids, my sealant sleeves, uh, you know, gasket. And now I'm probably gonna have to end up replacing the solenoids because none of that fixed my issue. And the last thing that I would, would check with a low mileage car is a timing belt. Now, if you don't know how to check if it's rusted or cracked or brittle, um, make sure you get that thing diagnosed. Make sure you get your whole car diagnosed. Low mileage cars can be a money pit. Now, you might be asking, it's like, how, man, you know, everything is new. Over time, every single part in the engine bay becomes brittle. Um, it doesn't matter how old the car is. It doesn't matter how many miles is on the car. Parts get brittle over time, especially when fluids sit. It can cause rust, it can cause issues, it can make things crack. Um, if your car only has 20,000 miles and it's a 2002, you can still have the exact same you know, water pump issues, uh, hose issues, leak issues as a car with 130,000 miles, 2002. So I'm basically trying to say here is that honestly, you're better off going with a newer car or you're better off going with an older car with higher mileage. If you're looking for low miles because you want to you like you know you don't like to see a car with higher mileage, I would go the medium range between 2009 to 2012. 2009 to 2012 is a good range for low mile cars. Anything before 2009, I would stay maybe 80 to 90,000 miles. That's a good range for a 2000, you know, 8 or older. 80 to 90,000 miles. I would not get anything under that because that means the car has been driven like a grandma, has never been broken in. You could have all kinds of issues that you just don't know about. Like me, I had to replace everything. Like, there's not a single part in this car that's stock. There's not a single part of this car that hasn't been replaced. The only thing that hasn't been replaced is my transmission, my engine. Like, literally everything's been replaced. And it's kind of sad, you know? My car just hit 70,000 miles. I got it with 60,000 miles, and I'm having these serious issues. I just, I, I know you guys are probably like, wow, this doesn't make any sense. It's just, to be honest with you guys, it makes perfect sense. When a car has been sitting for a long period of time, fluids hasn't been moving around, a car is meant to be driven. When it's not driven, fluids sit, they cause corrosion, they cause rust, they cause problems, and that's something you don't want to deal with. That's what I found out about my car after owning it for all this time. I finally hit 70,000 miles. Thankfully, it's running strong. Um, people always ask me, what is a good mileage for a car? Now, if you, I'm gonna straight up answer this for my BMW followers. Um, if you're looking for a BMW E92, E90 from the year 2006 to 2009, like, I mean, to be honest, 80 to 90,000 miles is a pretty good amount of miles for an older car, uh, you know, from anything before 2008. Now, if you're like 2009 to 2013, 2012, that is like the medium range. It's finally with low miles vehicles. Um, those cars actually tend to be more reliable. Now, of course, if you got the money, newer cars, low mileage is perfect. It is now 2018. So 2008 has been over 10 years old, okay? So for a 10 year old car with 20,000 miles, that's a big issue because for every year, a car is normally driven around 12 to 15,000 miles. And if your car hasn't been driven at least 8,000 miles for every year, is a good amount of miles per year. I mean, if a car's been driven around 8,000 miles a year, that means it's been on the highway, it's been on the roads, it's it's been through everything. It's It's been broken into, it's a solid car. For anything after, anything before 2008, you know, 8,000 miles a year is a solid car. So if you consider it, eight times 10, 10 years, so for a 2008 car, 80,000 miles is probably your best bet. Of course, around 100,000, 120,000, um, it's it, your car, I mean, it, it's starting to get a little bit older, the engine's starting to get a little bit weaker, but it doesn't mean it won't run solid, it'll probably run more solid than a car with super low miles. And a prime example of this is how my brother has 130,000 miles on his BMW. Uh, 130,000 miles, I was never ever looking in that range, but after driving this car and seeing how the tranny is very, very, very smooth to shift, car runs perfectly, no issues, fingers crossed, you haven't hit the highway yet, but everything seems to be pretty solid. Um, and we got it for a really good deal, you know? Like this car, I paid almost an arm and a leg for it, and that's mainly because I didn't want to have any issues as a college student with this car. But because of all these issues, I have this channel, and you guys know me, um, you, you guys would know that this car gives me a lot of issues because of how much low mileage, and it was never broken into, and you know, I thought the previous owner just never took care of the car, but it was the other way around. They actually took, like, they took this car in as a baby. They, they, they babied it so much, to where it's unhealthy for a car. A car needs to be driven, that's the end of story. If the car isn't driven enough, that can cause problems. And 
I have some links to two articles down below uh, just to show you guys, you know, I'm not making this up. I just, I have personal experience with my car with all these issues. If you guys follow me on the channel and look at my other videos, you understand what I've been, you know, going through with my car. These articles below are just to support my claims and what I'm saying. So if you guys want to check that out down below and get more information, again, it'll be down below. So before I end this video, I just want you guys to send me some prayers. By the time I upload this video, I'm going to be having my surgery on my leg. Um, long story short, I broke my leg a couple years back, have some metal in my leg and I'm getting my leg I'm getting the surgery done I'm gonna be put under I'm not a big fan of being put under um, I hear a lot of stories of people being put under and they just don't wake up after the surgery you know you never know when is your last breath you gotta always um, thank God for your blessings so you know thank you guys for always supporting me supporting my channel Pray for me. I'm going to make this through and make you guys another video. Hopefully, you know, most likely I'll make it out. But just pray for me, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you guys didn't enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button for me. See you guys in the next one. Peace out. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy. You know you're all.